Okay, so this vlog today was gonna be just us whining about how hard our life was. Uh, I didn't have the energy to like turn the camera on or film her every day, and we've been going through a ton of stuff. But then, last minute, we changed our mind and we got this awesome comment that I wanna talk about. It's from Peach's Tribe, and it says, we have differing opinions on spanking, I can't under good conscience teach my son not to hit and then turn around and hit him. My husband and I have found that yes, alternate forms of punishment are more time consuming and a lot of repetition. However, it is working long term. So <clears throat> we wanted to spend some time and just bro down about this whole spanking thing and specifically have a discussion about punishment versus discipline. This is not like a how-to prescriptive, like you should raise your kids this way. Um, we're gonna share what we've learned raising our six children and what we believe, because I think what we believe kind of like guides what we actually do. Well, let's go. Um, okay, first off, we don't believe in punishment. At all? I can't think of an example where I actually think of punishment. So just to clarify, this is like the definition of yeah. punishment. It's like, okay, you did this. Now, because you did that, you deserve this. Um, it's like justice oriented. So if you think of like a, a courthouse, you know, if you rape someone, you should be spending like 10 years in prison or something like that. And we don't believe in that? Or what are you saying? What, what do we don't believe in? Um, I don't think we do that with kids. Oh, yeah. I, I'm fine with the courthouse I know, but, dishing out punishment. Because okay, you just said, we don't believe in okay. punishment. Punishment is fine for certain circumstances. I think on a societal level, maybe a justice courthouse level, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, with our children, uh, there's two things I think that keep us from punishing. One is believing that we don't have to. Uh, as people that believe in God and Jesus, we believe that Jesus paid the price for us and our kids so that we don't have to get punishment anymore, um, which is a pretty crazy deal, but that's just what we believe. So we're actually trying to teach that to our children. The second thing is, I don't really think punishment makes the best training tool. Um, I don't think it teaches. Mm -hmm. So another way to look at it is punishment is usually backward facing. It's like, you did this in the past, therefore you need to get this now. And I think discipline, or another phrase for discipline is actually training. Um, it might be training that involves pain, but it's, the point of it is training is 100% future training. Now you might use information that you get from the past but it is actually all about the future and what your goals are for the future. And specifically with discipline your children, it's about what your goals are with your children about the future, who you want them to become, what you want them to avoid, what you want them to do or not do, um, and how you think as parents we can train them to get that. I guess like probably the biggest belief that we have in all of our life that impacts so much of what we do is that pain is actually the best teacher. And I believe this on like so many levels. Not uh, just physical pain. Like I think emotional pain can teach you too. Just, yeah, Everything. pain, period. Yeah. You know, it's, it's when I broke up with my first girlfriend that I realized, oh, I don't want to like destroy relationships. It was the pain afterwards that taught me that. Or if you make a series of bad decisions over the course of years and you have to live with the consequence of your choice, a lot of times it's that thing that teaches us where like just the words on paper or reading a book wouldn't teach us. But also like even on like a, I don't know if it's microbial level or biological level, like the pain that we subject our bodies to actually uh, teaches and trains our body, so to speak. So for example, when you lift weights, you're tearing muscle fibers 
and those muscle fibers, like it hurts, it's like physically actually hurting them, but it rebuilds them stronger than ever, and that's why your muscles grow. That's actually a really cool analogy. Thanks. I mean, like as far as you could take that and say that's what pain has the potential to do for us. Like it can make us stronger or more whole or healthier. Yeah. Interesting. And there's all sorts of other examples we could use about like pain and like the regular life of like being an indicator that something's wrong on a deeper level. But, and there's a book that um, was really influential to me as a teenager. It's called The Gift of Pain. The title kind of like just gives the whole thing away, but it's a doctor talking about like from a spiritual and biological level, like why this thing is so important and why we shouldn't avoid it. In fact, one of the big reasons why addicts get into so much trouble, and I've experienced this, is because a lot of why you turn to your addiction, whether it's TV or food or porn or alcohol, is because you're actually trying to avoid pain. And when you avoid pain, you avoid growth. So the problem isn't so much always the TV or the alcohol or the porn, as much as it is if when you spend 30 years avoiding growth, a lot of times um, addiction specialists will say, you stop maturing at the time that you start using. Okay, all that's a very fancy way of saying that pain is actually the best teacher. Now, as parents, we have this very challenging and I think fun opportunity to ask this question, how do we best train our children at different ages? Um, and pain, if it's the best teacher, we have to on some level, if we want our kids to learn lessons the best, be willing to use pain to teach them. Mm -hmm. And this is just because we love our children. It's not because you hate your children, it's just that you believe pain isn't bad. Now if you believe pain is bad, or wrong, then you're gonna try and keep your children from pain. I think that's a bad parenting model if you try and keep your children from pain. Now, there is like just um, like destruction and pain that causes destruction. So for example, if you chop your kid's arm off, mm -hmm. that's gonna hurt, but that's not bad just because it hurts. It's, it's bad because their arm's off. So mm -hmm. I'm not talking about pain just for pain's sake, uh, but we also can't say pain is just like completely bad and there's should like, be avoided. I guess mm. there's constructive pain and destructive pain. And there's pain that's actually really bad too that I think can be re redemptive. Can I say that? It can be it can be uh, restoring to you. Like even if like if you had a horrible childhood and it makes you like want to get therapy and the therapy like helps you become like a more whole person. I don't know. There's just, there's actually, there's things that can redeem. I think even like some really like crappy situations. Well, pain is like, you know, I think of it as like, it's a dashboard that when you look at it, it tells you how fast you're going. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important, but not to like kill the messenger. So if you're, if you're experiencing a lot of pain, Mm -hmm. You know, you can take opiates and just numb yourself and you're not feeling the pain, but the destructive things are still happening in your life and yeah. you don't want to cover up your dashboard. So in that way, I think pain is always good, but yeah. what it's revealing, okay, that's like yeah. philosophical, but <laughs> so when you believe that pain is good, there's all sorts of different ways you can use this to train your children. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use like the most basic one that we use a lot with our one year old which is um, we're trying to teach him about off-limits areas. Um, sometimes these are for his own direct safety. So for example, we have a fireplace um, in the living room and when he touches the brick, which is like the perimeter of the fireplace, we give him a flick. We've been doing this now for like six months. I mean, he's, he's so smart, like he knows and he points and he says, no, no. And in the beginning it was really hard and weird because he was like- Or he'll step on and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but what we're trying to say is, hey, like this fireplace is going to hurt you like way more. And like, we just don't want you to touch it. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to mess about it. We could put a fence around it. Um, but in a way that's actually a shortcut from being able to teach, um, our son this lesson that he has the mental faculties to understand, like he gets it. Um, 
So there's like the direct, like, it's nice to know he's not gonna touch the fireplace. Um, but also there's like other ways where we're just teaching him to respect and obey our voices. Because we're gonna be in scenarios where it's not always the fireplace. Maybe it's a road, or maybe it's an electrical outlet, or maybe it's a dog, or you know, who knows? Or the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> and we think, in general, it's good for him to know that we are bigger and smarter than him, and we're looking out for his interests. So, you know, when we say no, we want his little brain to be like, this is like, okay, I need to pay attention to this, like, mm -hmm. you know, and not move forward, whatever the course of action is. Some people don't. Um, do that and I sense that they're always stressing out and always chasing their kids. These are the people at grocery stores that I see like freaking out because they never know what their kid's gonna do. Um, and I think like if you can choose to live that life, but the thing is like I've never seen in the long run kids being happier or adults being happier. Um, there is another issue I think that is related to this and I, I think sometimes it can get really exhausting training your kid. At least it does for me. Um, so a lot of times I just want, I want those shortcuts. Like I want to pick him up in the middle of Costco and put him in the basket because I don't want to deal with constantly telling him no or needing to discipline him. I don't know, like, I mean, that's like a reality, but I wanna say like, that's what I'm choosing. Like I'm choosing to, I'm exhausted and I just don't wanna, I don't wanna be on training mode right now. And I think, I don't know, like you have a lot more energy for that training than I do. And I actually really respect that. And I, and I think I can work on having more energy for that, but I think maybe I won't ever have as much energy. Well, I think I'm you. like so long-term minded naturally yeah. that I get a lot of energy. Cause you just, can, it's like you can always see. Yeah, I'm looking I, like 15 years down the line. Which I'm not, I'm not. So I'm like, okay, he's so, crying right now, but that doesn't really phase me. Yeah. What really hurts me is when I feel like we're like, you know, not teaching him something that's gonna benefit him in 15 years. Right, so maybe there's, in a parenting team, there's like one of you that is more the Ben and one of you that's more the Cammy. Well, I think I could I can ask Ben and I have asked him for help in this area. And I think that's really important. Um, and I would, if you, now, if you're both kind of short-sighted, then maybe you're a little screwed, but I'm sure you'll figure stuff out. You have to like come up with a plan together. That you yeah, I'm sure you'll figure stuff out. Like it's not gonna look just like ours, our thing. But I think that is a cool thing that you're probably different from your spouse in some ways and you can ask for help. You know, sometimes I'm just like exhausted and I'm like, Ben, can you, can you, can you deal with him? Well, yeah, um, training is just like a full-time 24-hour job. Yeah. And I, and I think we have to be honest about our limitations. Right. But we also have to be, it's good to step back and at least agree with what the goal is. Yep. And what tools we have at our disposable when we have the fortitude yeah. to at least use them. Right. So there's like the simple like flick or spanking pain that we're using with our one-year-old right now. And personally, I like to get out of that phase as soon as possible, just because I, I don't think that, I think that lesson is so simple, it's like so cause and effect. So for us, we don't do that a ton past the age of three or four, I, I guess it depends yeah. on the child. It's less and less. Whenever you think that there's better ways to teach, that's the mm -hmm. question though, but it's, it's not about what we're comfortable with, it's about what is the most loving and most long-term uh, thing that's gonna teach this child the best direction to go. That's what we're asking. Mm -hmm. And we're willing to do whatever that takes. Um, but there's other forms of, like it's still pain, like by the way. It might not look like, mm -hmm. you know, spanking, which is kind of caveman. <laughs> but when, you know, our 16 year old, um, you know, is on her iPod at dinner and she's not supposed to, when we take the iPod away for a week or a day, 
that's pain. Like, that's a loss. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you might as well, as far as she's concerned, she'd probably rather get spanked, but, you know, we take mm -hmm. the iPod away and it causes her emotional distress. That's why we do it. But it's, once again, it's not because you did this and you deserve this. We're asking this question, man, how can we, if you're not gonna listen to our words, then we're gonna have, we're gonna have to crank up the pain o meter here. Because mm -hmm. words don't really hurt. And, and like I said, this is not about 16 year olds or, or, or children. This is about adults. This is the way the universe is designed. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you're like, ah, oh, screw it, I won't exercise. And then something physical happens where you get hurt mm -hmm. or you, you know, something, an alarm goes off in your head and you're like, crap, that's the motivation I needed to get moving here. That's like a good thing that those alarm bells go off and those things happen. And with our kids, we wanna make that happen because the idea very simply is this, is like, you know, we can see where this road heads. If you're on your iPod all the time and you don't listen to your parents, we think that's not gonna be good for your life. So if we don't like throw like a pain barrier on this route and get you to change routes, you're gonna keep on going and we don't want you to keep on going. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna make it difficult for you to keep on going down what we think is the most destructive route. Yeah. And maybe it's not iPods, you guys. Maybe it's the type of friends your kids are hanging out with or um, the way they're treating you or the way they're treating their siblings. If you don't have an outlet for how you've been wronged by your child, like they decided to completely not listen to you or do the opposite thing, then you're gonna feel this need to punish them somehow. And this is something I think I struggled with earlier on is that my kid like is clearly not listening to me and I feel like violated or wronged or wrong, wronged, yeah, wronged as a parent. And I have this like, Oh, that really like pisses me off. And I have like no, because I couldn't like figure out how to train them differently, it became really personal for me. And so I just like got really upset at them and would get into more like punishment mode, which for me a lot of times just looked like yelling in the moment or um, maybe like, well, just like punishing them somehow. Withdrawing. Withdrawing emotionally, uh, maybe making that, like putting a punishment down that wasn't like super appropriate or something like that. Because it's just reactionary. But yeah, but I realized that I, no matter what, we have to have some outlet for if our kids don't listen to us, you have to have an outlet. So that's either going to be in my opinion, a healthy one where you're gonna train train them, or it can be look unhealthy where you're gonna like lash out somehow or withdraw. But we're like human, and humans like have to have an outlet for their emotions somehow. And we think like as parents, if the goal isn't to keep them from pain, um, one of the things we can, I don't know if promise is the right word, but commit to is to be with our children through their pain. And I think this is what in the Bible God says he will do. He never says he's gonna not give pain. In fact, that's what, a lot of what inspired this talk was just reading some of the Bible recently, how much God was pain, how much pain God was actually willing to inflict on his people because he loved them and he wanted them to change and learn and grow. I mean, and it was crazy, you guys. I mean, we think we look at spankings as abusive, I mean, if that's uncomfortable for you, try like generations dying in deserts. You know, this is like, it's, it's like brutal stuff, but it was actually for an entire people group to try and change their hearts and remember certain things and forget practices and ultimately to be closer to God. And God loves his people so much, according to the biblical story, that he's willing to put them to pain through certain kinds of pain. I mean, it's not random. It's actually a certain type of training that he thinks will draw them closer to him. But what he says is that he'll never leave them through the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, and that the ultimate picture of that is this crazy story we have in Christianity, which is Jesus dying on the cross. It's like the most painful thing ever. Um, and the craziest thing that ever happened to Jesus was God actually left him, which only happened like once in all of history. 
according to the Bible. So for us, good parenting is not preventing pain from uh, our children, but it's actually using it appropriately in a way that's going to train them and never leaving them in the midst of it. So as they're crying, mm -hmm. um, you know, even through their timeouts or through their groundings or through their restrictions, we try not to withdraw ourselves emotionally mm -hmm. um, or do this stuff out of anger, which is kind of separating ourselves, but just, you know, we're always asking this question, like, how can we best train the kids? Oh my gosh, this was such a long video. I didn't know this was going to get like this, but I think it's a tough topic and it deserves. So I hope that helps at least some of you guys think through your position and hear ours. And um, I'd love to hear what thoughts you guys have in the comments, if, if there was anything that was helpful or challenging, or if you have some counterpoint stuff to this. Uh, but here's like the big announcement. We are quitting the vlog for like a week. You're so mean. What? I mean, I thought about putting it in the title. Maybe it's still gonna be in the title, but like... Don't put it in the title. Well, otherwise then people aren't gonna know and they're not gonna be like interested in the thing. Uh, Anyways. You know what, that's true. Okay. Um, Seven and I leave tomorrow at 4 a.m. to go to Seattle for his 13th birthday trip. I let him choose anywhere in the world that he wanted to go. And we're gonna go skiing. And I thought about filming it a lot and then I was like, you know what? I can't do it. It's not worth it. It takes up too much time. We don't even know where we're staying um, tomorrow night, so it'll be exciting. Um, I'm gonna try and like film some to make maybe one video at the end about the whole trip, but uh, that's it. So we're gonna be taking off. We're not gonna be filming or vlogging. Cammy's gonna be um, holding down the fort. Um, and yep. the next time we'll see you guys, we'll be back, so. Peace out. <laughs> I, I was gonna be like, so we'll miss you guys, but actually, like, it's- You're a gonna miss us. <laughs> <laughs>